My name is Marty with FLIR's TCX Training Department. We're here today to talk about creating and managing alarms. And you can see right here in the system settings is the uh, repository of all the alarms that we've created. And you can see I don't have any right now. But this is actually where we create the alarms. However, what we need to understand is uh, once the alarm is created, we then need to sort of tie it to something physical. And you can see in my physical view here, I'm in my system. And you can see all of the actions, uh, excuse me, the events basically on the actions tab for the system are server related. Uh, you know, storage issues, uh, accessibility lost, uh, system components, etc. These are the events uh, that are related to the system. As you can see here on my archiver, it also has actions or events basically that are related to an archiver. Now the actions are what we get when we right click and we'll see that in just a second but uh, finally you can see here the camera even though this is not a PTZ camera this is an event that has to relate to cameras and so uh, we have one down here that we're going to use a recording clip export started so when we export something we can get the alarm to fire and by right clicking is how we bring up the actions menu and any of these things here we can do and tie right to that particular alarm down at the very bottom you see the trigger alarm and that's probably what we're going to be using here uh, once we create it but again here's uh, as you see the actions uh, menu is universal across all of the individual different types of events. The events themselves are associated with the thing that it is, right? This is the system. These are system events. Right-click menu is the same. The actions are all the same on each type of item. So let's go back to our camera now. And this is actually the one we're going to be attaching it to. Uh, but first, we need to create the alarm that we can then attach down here to the recording clip export started event. So uh, let's go back to our system settings. And you can see here's my alarm type. I right click and I add a new alarm type. And when I do that, I have four tabs across the top. But we'll start right here on the general tab and just give it a name and call it clip exported because that's what you're going to be doing. Just like anything else in Admin Center, there's a description that you can put in here if you need it. Uh, we have a pre-alarm coverage field here. Any available coverages that we have in the system can be used, but we generally attach that more to the cameras uh, themselves, and we'll see that when we get to that tab. Uh, but right here is the procedural URL. This is one of my favorite things. It actually enables, uh, enables us to add some information that's important to the person receiving the alarm, uh, so something they can do, right? It could link to a, an intranet page, an SOP page. I have it linked just to a desktop um, text file that just says clip exported when it fires and opens up. I have the option right here to make it automatically display, and that is if we arm a tile for alternative content. We'll see what that means a little bit later. And when the dwell sl time slider here is if I have more than one camera attached to the alarm. Uh, I simply move them over to the right, and we're going to do that in a second. And then the dwell time slider here dictates, uh, you know, how it rotates through one particular pane that's armed for alarm. And again, we'll talk about that. So priority, you can see we have a prioritization uh, slider. Uh, one is high, as it is now, and you can see 100 is low. Once I crack about a third of the way, right, 34 it turns to the medium yellow. And then if I go to the, uh, the low end or the higher numbers, I have the low level alert. So let's leave this out as a 1 priority. Right here, this gives us the ability to make sure when somebody clears the alarm, like a guard in a guards group in a command center, that they add some information that could possibly help us uh, later on down the road when we're looking back at our alarms and trying to manage them. Rearming after the alarm itself needs to be determined here. By default, you can see it just rearms after five seconds. Most people, I think, would utilize this one. However, there are other methods we can use. Right here, you can see I can have it rearmed only after it's cleared. If I expect there to be somebody there to be able to clear it, well, I can do that. Now, however, if we look at this, rearmed after previous event, you know, after previous alarm is cleared, and then we can have it automatically cleared down here in the automatic. So tied together, right? You can have it set to automatically clear up to one second, and then it'll rearm itself immediately. Let's just set it back to five seconds. The bottom one here, deleting cleared alarms, generally you tie it to the amount of days of recording that you have for your cameras, right? If there's cameras attached to it and you have about 31 days of uh, camera recorded capabilities, most likely you just leave that about the same. It doesn't really matter, and I, probably most people don't even delete them. Uh, right here is where we decide which cameras we want to add to the alarm. It can as many as we like to, basically. Uh, you do have to have a, uh, a you know pain alarm, or excuse me, a pain in control center armed for alarm. Now we could add the camera just by highlighting and move it over. Uh, 
when we click on it, uh, let's just get rid of this one again. I wanted to show you, you could just put more than one. But right here, we have our camera we're going to use. If I click on the word false, I see I have three choices. The first one is a view live. So when the alarm goes off, I'm looking at what's going on live, and that's great. You could tie these to the live one, right, uh, if you're not recording. Uh, and you want the alarm to generate the recording or start the recording, you could tie it to this one. And then put in some pre-alarm and post-alarm buffers, uh, you know, to your liking. Uh, easy enough done, uh, pretty straightforward. Now, if you don't want to start recording, and it already is recording, uh, maybe you want to be able to see the playback, right? And when you uh, use the playback, this is a good one, right? If a door alarm, you know, a door gets open, the alarm goes off, this allows me to be able to see the person walking up to the door if I set it about five seconds, etc. on a pre-buffer. But for this example, we're just going to use a live camera. But I could add other versions as well, and I would need two panes uh, or a rotating pane. Uh, to be able to display them both. So we've added the one camera. Now the recipients, there's really two choices, all recipients at the same time, which is the default, and I think most people would use. However, you can prioritize the alarms sequentially by priority, which is right the second slider bar. But all at the same time, you simply grab users and you move them over. And you see, I don't have any users in here except for the system admin, but if I had some like Sam and Fred and Julie and Jane, I could simply move them over and they would all get them at the same time. Now, if I click this, I can use the priority bar then to determine how they get delivered, in what order. So what I would do was, whoever's priority one, they're going to get it first, uh, and uh, say, maybe the guards group. But maybe the guards manager, I want to set to two, and then the system admin to three, and then the escalation timeout here is just the time between each one. So if priority one gets the alarm, they don't do anything, they don't handle it, it goes to priority two. If they don't handle it, then it goes to the system admin here in priority three after a full minute, right? 30 seconds for one, 30 seconds for two, and then the priority three would get it. So let's just leave it all at the same time. I am logged in as the system administrator. So we'll just leave that at priority one. Uh, now just for a review, uh, we have our general tab, all the information we wanted here. Uh, here's the camera that we have tied to the alarm. And here is the recipient getting it um, all at the same time, but there's only one. So that looks good now. Let's go ahead and save our alarm. Uh, and now the alarm is created, right? But again, this needs to be tied to something. It's not doing anything by itself just sitting there. We have to go to the uh, Actions tab and tie it to one of the events, right? So we're going to go right to the 51 camera. We already had it set up. And uh, when a recording clip export starts, we want to trigger alarm. Now, we could do anything else up here, too, but for this example, we've created an alarm, so let's go ahead and trigger that alarm, and we simply bring it up, and we move it over into the attached items. We could have it at, uh, or maybe only during the day for our coverage, maybe only during the day, not at night. Uh, for this example, we'll leave it at always, but you can pick and choose. Uh, and then that's basically it, right? You hit save, and now this alarm uh, is not only created, but tied to this particular event on the camera. So the event you see is a recording <coughs> clip start, excuse me, export started. So now you can see right here, I'm going to grab a camera down here, and you'll notice the number three pane is gray, and number four pane is gray as well. But the uh, one and two panes have colored little boxes in the bottom left. And if I hover over this one, you can see it's arm for alarm. Uh, now this one down here is unarmed, right? If I click it one time, you'll see what happens. It now goes to arm for alternative content, just like this one. And there are two things that alternative content give us. One is an instant replay right from a live screen, which we're about to see here. But uh, it'll go to the first available one if I arm it for alternative content. So I'm going to unarm number two. And I'm going to make it go, my instant replay, to the armed for alternative tile right here on number four. Now, the reason that we're talking about this is because I'm going to need number two, or, or pain two, basically, to be able to uh, arm for alternative content once the instant replay starts here, because I need that for that procedural URL, if you remember we just set up. So here's my timeline. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to arm this tile now for alternative content. So our procedural URL should go there. Our alarm should go here, because this tile is armed for alarm. Now I want to arm this tile for alternative content also, because that's the one we want to have. This is the tile we arm for alarm. Uh, pretty easy to do. This is the tile. We just simply click it again the third time. Click it again, it goes to unarmed, and now we have it back to armed for alternative content because that's where we want our procedural URL to be displayed, and this is the pane where we want our camera that we have attached to that alarm to be displayed. So with that said, uh, let's uh, now keep in mind, you know, arming is very simple. You just click the button, you can click it again. And uh, if you don't want people to use alarms, you can go into the tools and options and uh, turn off those little boxes in the bottom. All right, so we're down here on our timeline. We're going to just drag a little bit and export a quick little clip. Uh, we'll just call it test. And when I say OK, we should see what I just described in the top two panes. The export was started, and as you can see, the alarm fires, tells us what's going on. 
And uh, right here is the arm for alarm pane, which shows the camera that we had attached to the uh, alarm. And right here is our clip exported, which is our procedural URL.